I remember when I was um, a few years back, I was thinking about this letting go, like all this spiritual path in the end. I need to let go of everything I value, you know, so to speak. And I was scared of letting go of money. And I was talking to a friend, he's like, I, I'm so scared of letting go of money. I was in the agony of it. And he said, Does anybody ask you to let go of that now? I don't know. It's, it's just not. It's all met, like hypothetical thinking about the future. There was not the, the present guidance. So there was always fear was associated with the future thoughts, actually. And when it was the time to let go of money, it was actually so joyful and easy. There was absolutely no agony. So all the fear was all anticipations of what's to come. And yeah, every time that I notice when I let go of something, it's not really a conscious decision like, I think I need to let go of this. It's always the time that is it's time, somehow it's time to, you, you have a grow some concept, and it's just time, and spirit present opportunity to let it go. And I remember, um, you know, I was in a kind of relationship with David for a couple of years, and then when it was time, that was guided that our relationship assignment finished, it was, I was going through this, let go, and there was very seemingly a lot of a lot of fear or abandonment just came up that was buried underneath that I wasn't looking at before, and all this came up. But at the same time, because it was so guided, I was going through all this fear and abandonment. But at the same time, I was going through a lot of amazing mystical experiences side by side, and they're providing me all these insights that I couldn't really comprehend in my logical mind. So it was very, very, in a way that I was very, very guided, that I was carried. And after that experience, in a way that, because at the beginning of our relationship, I was telling David how I was afraid of facing this abandonment. And David was saying, you will see the impossibility of abandonment after this relationship, basically. And that was exactly what I was going through, like really facing it when it is time, when there was guidance. The result of facing it so fully as guided was the mind was blown completely open. And all the thoughts of abandonment, <coughs> the possibility of Abandonment was completely wiped out after that experience. Everything was seen as the spirit, as love. And then we come back together, you know, in this real joy and collaboration, and there is just no grievance. And that's why I couldn't answer a question on whether we're in a relationship, because in form, it changed that there is no physical intimacy, but we have no box to relate to each other anymore. So. It was a very, very expanded experience. It's very, very intimate. So if that is what I have let go of, I let go of something so small, that's so restricting, to, for something that is huge. And that's, you know, just, I couldn't even comprehend when I was locked in that box. So that's really what we're called to let go, but it's time, you know. If there's one thing, just one idea you could take away from tonight that will save you <coughs> thousands of years, it's that you, you really, you can't judge or compare and inform. The curriculum is so highly individualized for all of us that it's absolutely ridiculous to try to compare and contrast and form. It really comes down to, to honestly following the guidance because when the spirit knows that you're ready to outgrow something or to let go of, of a, a self-concept, it's just given to you, it's so obvious, and then you accept it and you feel so expansive. But there's no comparison. It, it doesn't prescribe for anybody else what they need to do. It doesn't prescribe that there's a formula. It doesn't prescribe that there's a way to live. That's that's what we didn't like about morality. That's what we didn't like about ethics. We didn't want to be told, here's the form, 
live up to it, you know. In fact, even with Jesus as the way shower, I mean, basically in A Course in Miracles, he's not saying, do what I did. He's saying, think like me. Align your mind with me. Think like me. Or as they say in Solaris, you know, we don't have to think like that anymore. That's, that means the ego. We actually don't need to think with the ego. We can think with Christ, with the Buddha, with, with the divinity. We can actually train our minds to be in alignment and think with spirit. You know, be in alignment that way. And we don't have to try to follow and model our behavior after a specific teacher or guru or saint and say, well, I need to do it that way. And that relates directly to Sina's question that she brought up, you know, was what if I don't feel to live in a community and I beat myself up or I think I did something wrong or things could be different. You know, those are all those hypothetical things that the ego is just trying to run a guilt trip on you any way it can. But we're not asked to compare the form. We're asked to be intuitive, to really be highly intuitive. We can do this. We can do this. In fact, it's inevitable that we tune into this guidance and this intuition. The ego can't really stop us. We, you know, it's, we can't be stopped in this awakening. So that's what we are always, when we come together with people, we don't premeditate and think, oh, I'm going to meet so-and-so, this is what I need to say and do. It's coming with that blank, open mind and a really wide open heart just to pray together, to join together and to receive what is helpful. And sometimes you can do it for yourself, so to speak, and other times it's good to do it with a, a mighty companion a trusted friend, somebody you love, somebody who will laugh with you and, and will not take this world seriously, somebody you feel connected to and linked up with. Nowadays we use Skype, we do phone calls. I've even got, uh, in my phone here, I have a, a Danish SIM card. And now, so I can talk to people around here. Here, so that's what, you've got one too, right? So we've got two little Danish SIM cards in there, and that's for just for now. It could, ch could change as we move around other parts of the world, but that's just a sim <laughs> symbol of, of the, the joining, of just being flexible and open, and not trying to direct the form. And the ideas and the things we were sharing tonight, you can gain, you can feel it in your heart with the, what these principles and these ideas are all about. But the real transformation comes in the transfer of training. It's not in having aspects and areas of your life that you would keep apart from spirit. So it's almost like a lighthouse, you know, when the ship's coming in and letting that light spin around and do a full, like a full 360 in your mind. It's the only difficulties we have is where we try to hold back from the guidance of the Spirit, where we say, no, I'm not right about this. No, stay away. Don't touch my relationship. Nope, I've got my best job ever. You know, I don't even want to hear it. it. It took me too long to get this job. No, it, it, it can be anything where, where you feel like a hesitancy or a resistance and, and you don't even want to go there then when we come together and we join together, it really helps us really feel the Spirit, like feel what's, what the guidance is. And that's really precious. So thank you. Thank you all for sharing this very intimate evening.